649 taking a live look this Monday morning at a neighborhood in Richmond, Ohio, a site that we are all too familiar with in the valley here in the spring. They're one of the many communities in the east that were hit hard by snowstorms this winter and are now bracing for major flooding. As you can see, some homes are already surrounded by high water from the Ohio River. Hi again and good morning everyone. Thanks for waking up with the Valley today. Now 10 minutes before 7 o'clock. I'm Lisa Badeau here with Kyle Bosch. We're starting our non-stop news and weather to help you plan your day. And we start with breaking news this Monday morning. Grand Forks police are looking for three men who robbed a gas station late last night. Police say the men went into the Senex station on the 3600 block of Gateway Drive right around 10 p.m. The clerk says one of them did have a gun. The men are described as black, about six feet tall with thinner builds. One was wearing a black jacket, another had a gray jacket, the third was wearing a dark colored jacket. Now all three had their faces covered and ran south when they left the store. If you have any information about this incident, please call Grand Forks Police. That number is 787-8000. A 48-year-old North Dakota man is dead after a pickup rollover in Pierce County over the weekend. It happened around 4 a.m. yesterday near Animus. The North Dakota Highway Patrol says the driver drifted into a ditch, overcorrected, and then rolled several times. The victim was not wearing a seatbelt and was partially thrown out of his vehicle. His name is being withheld until his relatives are notified. Just about to hit 651, right? 651 on this Monday morning. We start with weather and traffic on the ones with meteorologist Mick Care. To Kyle, and as we uh, work our way into our Monday, the in between the St. Patrick's Day celebrations and the actual St. Patrick's Day tomorrow, we're going cool, cooling down with a little rain shower activity, emphasis on little. But it will be there, and it's probably the first significant precipitation of the month of March, but maybe only a tenth of an inch of rainfall, maybe mixed with a little snow. By late afternoon and evening, going to start to eliminate the clouds, and the temperature obviously will be dropping. And tomorrow morning, we'll be down into the 20s. This afternoon, cooling from, yes, our mid, some upper 40s, to about 40 to 38. Valley City, Jamestown, mostly cloudy, breezy, and cooler. Wind in west-central Minnesota will be north-northeast, about 20. Cloudy, breezy, and cooler by about 5 to 7 degrees cooler than it is right now. And the northern end of the valley will have it the coolest with a north-northwest wind and mostly in the mid-30s by the time you get to after school, after work. 34 to 36 degrees, Grafton about 40, Carrington and uh, New Rockford about 36, Cooperstown about 36. Here's where the sprinkles of light rain are. Some locations, though, west of Devil's Lake out there in Benson County and north of Bismarck, between Minot and around Garrison, there's a whole lot of uh, moderate rain coming down and, uh, again, light rain mostly in northwest Minnesota, stretching just to the south of Highway 2 and north of Highway 200. All of that sliding east and uh, stretches all the way out to California. Temperatures are 47 in Fargo, 50 Fergus Falls, and again a northeast breeze right now 5 to 15. 40 degrees, a couple of sprinkles going on up in the Grand Forks, East Grand Forks area, Fargo-Moorhead at 47. Let's get our traffic update now from Al Ahmed. Well, as my friend Scott Miller would say, my oh my, but we have one heck of a busy traffic morning going this morning. Out on the Metro Interstate Loop, I-94 traffic real thick, particularly westbound, but uh, eastbound is no slouch either. I-29 traffic real heavy, particularly northbound, particularly around the tri-level. you got to be careful there. There's a heck of a lot of congestion there. I'm at 52nd Avenue South right now, and uh, Interstate 29, 52nd Avenue South traffic is uh, beyond uh, beyond active. <laughs> I wouldn't call it heavy yet either, but it's pretty darn busy. Make sure you're driving extra carefully this morning. Al Ahmed Valley Today traffic. It's now seven minutes before seven o'clock. The city of Moorhead is anticipating some good news from Minnesota Governor Mark Dayton when he hits town a little later this morning. He's talking about rail crossing safety and funding for local governments to repair state highways and bridges. Dayton is expected to detail plans for a major grade separation project at rail crossings in Moorhead that he first laid out on Friday. He'll also outline proposals for improvements on I-94, highways 2 and 371, and highway 71 in Bemidji. 
Dayton will hold a news conference at 10 this morning at the Yumcom Center in Moorhead. He's got another one at 1.30 this afternoon in Bemidji. Officials are warning people to be very careful with fires during this early spring-like weather. Burning leaves sparked two grass fires in Glendon yesterday near the Buffalo River State Park. Authorities say a woman was burning leaves when the flames got out of control and started a first grass fire right off Highway 10. Crews got it knocked down, but it sparked another grass fire that burned around 200 acres in the park. Neighbors think kids playing with matches caused a fire at a park in Dilworth. The fire started around 11 yesterday morning at Woodbridge Park. Fire crews were able to put out the flames, but not before they damaged a large portion of the grass. The fire also came close to a number of homes surrounding that park. About 50 Minnesota state lawmakers, liquor store owners, and others made a collective beer run to Wisconsin yesterday in protest of Minnesota's Sunday liquor store sales ban. Allowing liquor stores to sell on Sunday has been a perenni perennial issue at the state legislature in recent years, and bills to repeal it have been introduced in both houses again this year. 655 in our consumer alert this morning. First comes love, then comes marriage, then comes the bill. Oh, is that how the rhyme goes? Yeah, and wedding costs have hit an all-time High. Yeah, according to the Knott's annual Real Wedding Survey, the average cost of a wedding reached an all-time high of just over $31,000 last year, and that's not even including the honeymoon. Is that You spent that much on your wedding not last year? Not a chance. No? Oh. We spent a lot, but not that much. <laughs> the cost is up 4.5% from 2013 and marks the fourth year in a row that the average costs have gone up. Findings from the study also showed 70% of weddings rang in somewhere between $10,000 and $65,000, suggesting, of course, the more affluent bride drove the average higher. The NDSU Bison men's basketball team heading west for the first round of the NCAA basketball tournament. Yeah, for the second year in a row, they will be going to Seattle, Washington. Hopefully some good vibes with the Bison after their upset of Oklahoma. They'll be playing Gonzaga this year. NDSU, the number 15 seed in the South Region. Gonzaga is the number 2 seed. Well, with the taste of yesterday's warm weather and really all last week of warm weather, it has a lot of people thinking about lakes and the wonderful summertime fun we can have out on the boats. West Fargo High School students have been thinking about cardboard boats all hmm. winter long. Maybe not the boat I was thinking when it was <laughs> warm out, but today is the day those students will be putting those cardboard boats to the test and race them against each other. Valley News Team's Ashley Bishop joins us now with more on this fun event. Good morning, Ashley. All right, we're here in the cardboard boat race. R Regatta will be here today, the third annual. Why should people come to this event, Michelle? It's a great fun to see these uh, students with the boats that they've built and the um, amazing creativity they have with their themes and their costumes, and so it's just a lot of fun. So the event, again, is today starting at 5. I'm going to quickly jump in here at the boat. Uh, this boat here, it is free and open to the public and out at Ellie Burger Swimming Pool in West Fargo. Here, let's see how it goes. Kyle, Lisa. Well, we got a couple of test boats. Uh, the I think she picked, a, one, uh, she picked she a good picked one, a good one. That was like the triple hold. But surprisingly, the, the rattle rod not doing too bad either. Some good designs. A little, little practice run here. And again, 53 boats uh, will be competing tonight. And you can check it out for free. A lot of work that the students have been putting, uh, putting together. And good to see that uh, the early... I don't know, I think she's we're all... She's not sinking, but she's no. not really going anywhere. She's, Ashley's kind of paddling in a circle there. I think we were all kind of hoping that she would have... That they get wet, right? That's what we're all secretly hoping for. But they... Ashley's just filling in this week. Her first day, we're like, we want her to <laughs> just go down, yeah. sink. <laughs> Ashley Bishop reporting live for us today. Thank you, Ashley. Dairy Queen is celebrating 75 years of business this year and thanking customers at participating Dairy Queen and DQ Grill and Chill locations with free cones. Woohoo! Everyone loves ice cream, and it's even better when it's free. People can stop by and get a free small vanilla soft serve cone. DQ is asking that if you do pick up that free ice cream today, that you make a donation to Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. Dairy Queen is, of course, a big supporter of Children's Miracle Network. We all know about Blizzard Day as well. They've raised more than $100 million over the last 30 years to support those great charities. So scream for free ice cream today and help out Children's Miracle Network. 
perfect for a Monday, too. I could use an ice cream cone for breakfast. Let's get our answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook. Today's question, a study found men who keep this clean and tidy are more likely to have an organized life. The answer, their email inbox. You can take part in our question of the morning by heading to our Valley News Live Facebook page every Monday through Friday. Yes, but it's so much work. Especially when you get 250 to 300 emails a day. Like every, every day. day. Yeah. And let's check our weather forecast, which uh, looks pretty good. A cloudy sky. Yes, we are warmer than our average high for this time of the year already. The only problem is we're not going anywhere temperature-wise. In fact, cooling to about 36 by after school, after work, and it will be windy. Thanks for waking up with the Valley today. More local news and weather for you right here in 25 minutes. Have a great Monday, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow morning.